And Rabbi Jack Paskoff's here with us. Just got back from a trip from Israel, and so he's going to join us now and talk a little bit about that. Rabbi, thanks for being with us. It's good to be here. Thanks. So tell me, obviously the war's going on there. You went to Israel. Why did you go? You know, these are my people. Yeah. Uh, it's a country that I feel deeply connected to. It's historically been our homeland for millennia. And there are times when you just have to show up to show your support. Wow. Where did you go? I spent my days in Tel Aviv uh, and then in Haifa and in Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, so pretty much in the central part of the country. So did you see or hear any of the rockets? I mean, was that any, any part of your trip? Yeah, there were a couple of rockets near where I was. Most of them were further north or further south but uh, it's the reality of life in Israel now. Yeah, we see the images, of course, in all those news stories. What's the mood like there? Kind of walk me through what you experienced from the people. You, you know, first of all, the focus now is on the hostages that are still being held in Gaza. Some were released, we're grateful for that, and we celebrate them coming home, but there are still over 100 hostages being held. There is nowhere you can walk for more than about 50 yards without finding some public display calling for their return. I think that's the primary focus. I didn't hear a lot of people chanting about victory. They want this to come to an end soon also, but not before the hostages are released. Yeah, we're starting to hear from some of those hostages and what they went through, which is heart-wrenching, you know, when you hear Absolutely. their stories. What's the mood of the people there? Do they seem hopeful? Do they seem, I mean, just how the mood? I would say determined. Okay, determined, that's a good. Uh, you know, we went from utter shock and vulnerability and now I think the word is determined. Uh, yeah. People are concerned, uh, there's a sadness, but right now it's what do we need to do to move past this and to get the people home. Interesting, you said you showed up for them because they're right. your people. Um, what did you get out of it? I probably got more out of it than they did, to be honest. I did some volunteer work, I lent some support to friends, I distributed what we call tzedakah, charity, uh, to those in Israel. But more than anything, I just needed to know that I was there. Uh, if I wasn't there to do the volunteer work, someone else would have done it. But I needed to be able to see and say, I was there for my people. When you said you were there to do volunteer work, what specifically did you do, Rabbi? You know, the most interesting day, I think, of the three was the second day that I was there. I visited with a colleague of mine who runs a small social service agency. We visited schools in poor areas of Haifa where these were already poor communities and now no one's working. They've either been called up to active duty from the reserves uh, or no one's hiring, no one's shopping. So it, the area becomes even poorer. But after that we went to visit with some folks who were evacuated from the southern part of the country. Hmm. Their homes weren't safe. They all lost people on October 7th. We gave them some support, financial and moral and spiritual. And from there, we met with a young woman who was actually at the Nova Festival on October 7th hmm. uh, when it was attacked. She was shot four times by Hamas, uh, has fortunately come a long way. There's still a long way to go, wow. both physically and emotionally. So just there to support. That, it, it, it's incredible, probably, what you saw there. Did you ever fear for your safety? I, maybe I'm foolish, but I kind of watched what the Israelis did. Oh. Uh, and even though we knew that there were rockets coming, um, I watched what they did. I made sure that we were safe. But life goes on. You know, we've seen, I know you've been instrumental here uh, between uh, the Jewish and the Muslim community, you know, working together, um, stopping hate that we've seen. What needs to be done? Because obviously we're seeing some of that here in our country um, as well. You know, one of the realities we see is that what's happening between Israel and Hamas in Gaza on a global level becomes Jewish and Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, which does not tell the story. Right. On October 7th, the very first group to reach out to me were the folks from the Islamic Community Center of Lancaster. And we've been in pretty regular touch since this started. We've developed friendships there over the years. So we need to make sure that we understand that a global geopolitical issue is not about a local religious issue. Too many places around the country and around the world, we've seen that spike in anti-Semitism, that spike in Islamophobia, mm -hmm. uh, and we need to really understand what that's all about. And I don't think a lot of people 
have that depth of understanding. Well said, Rabbi. Thank you Thank so you. much, Rabbi Jack Pasca, for coming in and talking to us. It's a pleasure having you here in the studio. Thanks very much. Thank Good you. I'm glad here. you're back home. All Thank right. You.